All right, so we're going to do a shoulder, pork shoulder. Pork shoulder is an easy cut of meat. You can't mess it up. You can't screw it up. Um, it's not like brisket. Brisket's a little tough. So we took this master class by Aaron Franklin. He does old school. He writes stuff down. And then he keeps his stuff for a later date just to check and see if you did something. Like we're just the date, you know, how long the cook is going to go, the size what we're cooking it at. And then that way, you can kind of have a record of what you're doing. I don't, I don't think you have to do that, but if you want to, it's a good deal. Here's the seasonings. This is it. And this, this is what Aaron Franklin said the most people do is they season too much. So we've got salt, coarse salt, kosher salt. We got 16 mesh black pepper. It's a really coarse pepper. Um, and the reason for that is so the smoke can get the meat. I throw a little bit of Lowry's on there. And then this is the secret, little bit of kick, is this Red Robin original seasoning. It's really good on everything. So that's all I do. Um, I'm going to be using mustard as a binder just to get um, everything. So let's just get going. So I'm going to use one hand for the wet, one hand for this, so we don't cross-contaminate anything. I don't really care about that at my house. And you're just going to slather everything so that this, this seasoning has something to stick to. It doesn't affect the flavor profile at all. It, it, you know, in case you don't like mustard, it, it's not going to affect the flavor at all. It's just, you won't even know what's on there. It's just to get the, the uh, stuff to stick. So now I go with salt first because I like to control how much salt I'm putting on. Get the sides, get everything nice and salted. Kind of hold it up. It gets kind of messy, so if you're doing this in your house, be careful, it's going to get messy. Um, but you need to hold it up so you can get a really nice coverage on it. Um, and if you hold it up, it really works good that way. And then, you know, you don't want to put too much salt on there, but you want a good enough coat that, that meat gets the salt. Then I do the pepper, nice even coat of pepper, and you can't do too much pepper really. Pepper gives you that nice bark on it, but again, it's just even. You want an even coat all over. Make sure you get the sides so that you have pepper and you can just pat it on there once it gets on your hand. And then I'll just do the other side and we'll do all this again, but that's pretty much it. And then I should take the tops off of this, <laughs> but just a dusting of Lowry's. And that's just to get, you know, get all over. And it doesn't need a lot. It doesn't need a lot of any of this stuff. Because you want the smoke to hit the meat. So you don't want it seasoned too much. We'll give that a pat. And we'll get it on the other side here. What's your ratio salt pepper? 50 50? Uh, on the shoulder? Just, you know what? I just. You eyeball it? it? I just eyeball it. Okay. I, I don't even have a. a uh, kind of a ratio. I probably should, but I really don't. Um, so same deal with the other side. Now this side's easier because you really, I still try to get the sides a little bit because a lot of times it falls off when you turn it. So I still get the sides. Again, you don't want too much salt, but you want enough on there that it creates a little little flavor on there and then the pepper is just really easy it's just a nice even coat of pepper all over everything and the reason for the coarse salt and the coarse pepper is the smoke gets into the meat better right it smoke, doesn't create yes. a barrier the smoke hits the meat if you're if you're seasoning too much you actually cover the meat so much that it can't get the smoke flavor right and the small particle salt and, and pepper same problem it yeah. creates like a barrier yeah so really what yeah. you want to do is, and I forgot to put the Red Robin on the other side, but this is just a really light dusting. And we'll turn this over, I'm gonna pat that in. We'll turn this over so I can get that on the other side. And this Red Robin stuff is really, really gives it a little bit of a kick. Has a little seasoning, I was just yeah. seasoning and just sugar, a just a teeny bit, yeah. Just a bit dusting. So now you've got this, yeah. we're gonna cook fat side down. Wait, if you're using a pellet grill, um, the big complaint about pellet grills is they don't do enough smoke. I have found that not to be the case. So what I do is I get the grill ready. So I turn on, we're gonna do 250 for probably six hours all okay. together. We will be spraying this. 
you do spray the edges and you don't want to get it so wet you just want to cool the edges off so the edges don't dry out but we're going to do 250 and the trick is so now notice i just started i've got the pork shoulder here we're going to take the pork shoulder and put it on right now right so there's nothing going on here so when that grill kicks on it puts a ton of smoke out when it's kicking on yeah everyone says to preheat but your trick is do put it on and it floods it with smoke do not preheat right That's the key. it may take a little bit longer because you've got about 20 minutes for it to actually yeah. really warm up but you get that really big um yeah hit of smoke right at first and it really really helps so that's that's how easy it is and then it's it's going to be six hours we're going to check it we're going to try to get it to 160 165 we're going to spray it every half hour somewhere in there just the edges yeah and then we're going to wrap it we're going to keep it wrapped for probably about two hours it's probably an eight hour cook with a shoulder um and the, but you're, we're going to it's not by temperature we're going to do it by feel you want it to feel like a like a warm bag stay of stay tuned and then we'll show you what this thing looks like we'll 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 come back out in about two hours because you don't want to check it for about two hours because you know it's not going to be ready. So we'll come back actually about an hour because we'll start spraying it. Check the temp, yeah, spray. We'll check the temp and we'll check what it looks like and then we'll spray it. Right, so the pork's been on for an hour. This is just uh, apple cider vinegar. So you want to spray the edges. You don't really need to soak it, you just want to keep the edges from uh, drying out. So here's an hour and what it looks like. Pretty good. It's starting to get starting to cook and then we're just going to spray the edges a little bit keep the edges a little bit moist give it a little bit of spritz you just want to spritz it like that and then you're done and that kind of keeps the temperature down and lets it cook um, real evenly so stay tuned and we'll keep checking in on this about every half hour we'll probably spritz it every hour uh, and then we'll check it at about three hours for temp uh, and then we'll just keep monitoring all right so um, we've had this thing on for five hours it's ready to go. Now the most important thing is you see this crack in here. You want to see this and there's a big crack all along the top. This is 165 almost on the dot. There you go. So you want to wrap at yep. 165. Um, how you want to do it, you don't have to spray it anymore, but we're going to spray the paper here to get it a little bit pliable so when we wrap it'll um, it'll, it'll, it'll wrap really good. Um, a good way to do this too is spray the, the vinegar on your hands mm -hmm. because you're going to pick this thing up and it way it's going to be hot. So the vinegar gives like gives you like two seconds so you can pick this up, put it on, and you, you don't burn yourself. Nice. So and you're just going to wrap. I mean, it's just like wrapping anything. You just kind of you get it up here. We're going to move this up a little. You get it up here, cut that. You want a good wrap on this. So, untuck the corners. It's just like wrapping a brisket. Same, yep. same deal, same concept. And, then, and you want to use this waxless butcher paper because yes. it still gets smoke, even though the paper is on it. So it's still gonna get smoke. I mean, again, this is a pellet smoker, so it doesn't get once it's going, it doesn't get a ton of smoke. Right. But then you just kind of keep this in here like this, like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this down here because this side's going down. We're just going to leave that in there like that. So now, you wrap. It goes back on probably another two hours. The way you tell if it's done is not by temperature pierce through the paper, it should feel like a, a wet bag of butter. It should just go in nice and soft. So we'll test it about another hour and a half. We'll check it, usually about two hours, but stay tuned. And uh, we'll rip this bad boy off and we'll show you everything we're doing as we right, pull it. So this thing has been cooking, it took a lot longer than we thought. It was gonna be like an eight hour cook. It started raining really hard and got really kind of humid. And it really like, I mean, you can see my breath. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it got really humid. That really affected the, the temp. It stalled out at like 168. After we wrapped it, it just stayed. So you can always boost up the temperature. I boosted it up to 350. It still took an additional, so we wrapped it at like 215. It's seven. It took an additional like four hours to cook. 
if you're out, make sure that if it's humid or if it's raining or temperature shots, drops, temperature yeah. Drops, don't don't def, you know, don't always go by temperature, go by feel. So when we took this, you can see the object is it feels like a, a warm bag of butter. So you, you put it in, it's really soft. It's 208 there. In here, it's about 203. Time to come off. It's up. perfect. So yep. we're taking it off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take it off, put it in here, and we're just going to let it uh, rest. So we're just going to let it rest now. We're going to take it in. We're going to let it rest for about 20 minutes. And then we'll come back when we're done. And we'll show you. We're just going to unwrap it after it sits for about 20 minutes. And then we're going to pull. It should pull. It should just fall apart. Um, and we'll we'll be inside for that. Um, so hang on. And uh, so we've let we'll it rest. Rest. we pulled it off at 204. We've let it rest. We're now going to unwrap it. So come on in. And this is our little thing here that we... Catch basin. Yeah, it's a really good thing uh, Jill got for me. It actually is really nice. Oh, is this thing nice? Oh, look at it. It's falling apart already. Okay, so... Oh, my goodness. Is the bone fall right out? That's the test. Yeah, so this is what you want right here. Oh. Right there. When that comes out like that, <laughs> you know you're on the right track. Um, oh, you can go underneath on the cutting board. I got through all that out. Okay. It's so, it done. Oh my God. By the way, the steel prep table. Steel prep table. Worth every. <laughs> worth every. I mean, this thing is absolutely perfect. Um, oh man, that looks good. It's it's. It's really perfect. hot, so you're using yeah, the I mean, right. So I'm using the tongs, but look at that. Yeah. I mean, it just it's gonna flake apart. Now, all we're gonna do is is shred it. Look at the smoke. Oh, oh yeah. Man, look at that. So oh, this is so you get the idea. This took a lot longer. It was uh, it was actually quite a bit longer. It was about four hours longer because of the rain and the yeah. humidity. But I mean, look at this thing falling apart. It's perfect. Take a piece. So what we're gonna do now? How's it taste? I don't know. I, I don't know if I can eat it. Too hot. It's pretty hot. It's pretty hot. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is, um, that's the cook, right? So that was what we did. You want a piece? I do. Here's a piece for you. <laughs> oh my god, it's super good. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. That's perfect. Good. Well, look, now all we're going to do is pull the rest of this. Well, it's not a million We'll degrees. mix it up with the juice here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make tacos. You can make whatever you want with this. You can do tacos. You can do pulled pork sandwiches, obviously. Um, Jill was looking up. Pork quesadillas. Pork quesadillas. Uh, pork the, mac, the list is cheese. endless. I mean, yeah. uh, once you pull this, the cool part is once it's pulled and you have it in a storage area, um, you got a meal for a like. I mean, we'll have a meal, I think, all week. Yeah, um, three to so five days, depending on how many really, people. And it's not too, it's pretty economical. Was it 35 bucks for this? No, 28. So 28 Eight, bucks. Almost nine bucks. pounds. And this is the easiest cut of meat to do. You oh. cannot mess this up well. um, if you follow those instructions. And um, the next thing we're going to do is a brisket. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be upcoming. But this is the, the thing you should start with. It's a very good confidence builder. It's hard to mess up. I, yep. I don't think you can. Um, brisket is a little bit different. Brisket takes a lot of attention and you yeah. got to be there. And, and um, So well, th thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for the brisket. That's probably coming up next week or the week after we're going to Oshkosh. So, yeah. Oh, and you were saying all that rub on the outside, when you toss it into the whole nine pounds, it's not that much outside no, and salt so and pepper, pepper. Don't be afraid of the pepper. Yeah. Use a lot. Coat it with the pepper. Once when it's you mixed mix in, it all in you, you'll just taste this really good yeah. um, meat. So, That's a nice right, meat. Thanks for watching. Yep. Stay tuned for the brisket.